All right, guys, we're here at the computer one more time and we have all our equipment here. We have our drone here, Tiny Go 4K with the Express LRS receiver in here. We have our radio with the module and we have our goggles here just in case we wanna check our VTX, make sure all our parameters, OSD stuff is laid out correctly. I have my fan here just to keep this thing cool because as I said before, once you put the USB in, everything gets powered, including the VTX. So we do wanna keep the drone cool as possible. All right, so here's beta flight. We're gonna plug this in. And the issue we had the first time of this not flashing, let's see if it goes away. All right, and I can see it flashing here. So we are no longer in bootloader mode, which is amazing. I'm gonna connect here. All right, so as I said before, come here to the ports, make sure you have your UART that you connected this receiver to as selected as serial RX. Configuration, the big thing here is making sure that you choose serial based and then you have crossfire chosen here. That's really crucial. I have my RSSI off input, so that's not required. So everything here looks good so far. This is all stock from the factory, which is good. We're not gonna change that. But here's the big thing here. We didn't see this the last time. So let's see if this works this time. Here we go, roll, looks good. That's all great throttle, perfect. All right, so let's make sure. Now this was set up for the original GR8 radio. So this has to be all reconfigured again. My arm switch, I have it right here. That's, so it's in reverse. I need to have it the opposite way, the way I like it. So over here, that's arm, reverse. Everything is in reverse of how they had it. Here's horizon and here's air mode. So that is now configured correctly. So now just save this, boom. And I think we're good. Now that we're using Express LRS versus the Futaba or the FHSS protocol, we have to change some of the stuff here on the OSD, meaning I want some more information on here. Obviously channel and band, link quality, that's what I definitely need for my Express LRS and then my DBM right here. So these two things right here are very crucial. That's all I need. So this is good. All right, I can see it here on the screen and everything looks good. Everything is literally in the correct position, guys. And that's it, guys. This thing is all set up for Express LRS. Telemetry lost. All right, telemetry is lost. And what I wanna do here is just see if all my switches work. Telemetry there you go, so we have telemetry. And we are gonna try our switches here. We know that this one here is for the beeper. Let's see if it works. That works. Angle. Horizon and air, that works as well. And this is crash flip, which we're not using now. Let's see if I can arm it. There you go. All right, we finally did it, guys. We finally, finally got this thing working, guys. What else can we do? Nothing else. All right, let's go outside, take this for a flight, see how this thing feels now with the new receiver. With my old radio, yes, but the radio that I always wanted to fly this drone with. And now I can fly this with any radio now because I have a really common or compatible receiver in this drone. So let's go outside guys. We're gonna fly this thing, see how it behaves, see the range, and I'm assuming I'm gonna outrange my VTX. But let's go here, go out there, see how it behaves, and see if it actually works, guys. All right guys, we're out here. Nice, beautiful day. A little cold, and uh, winds are light, variable between five and 10 miles an hour. Have our drone here. New receiver on here. We have our radio. We're gonna power this up. Welcome to OpenTX. Got my regular antenna here. Good morning. That's all good. Start off in angle mode here. RSSI is good. We can get, I haven't gotten pretty far with this drone. Usually my maximum range is around here by this basketball cord. Looking pretty good. Oh, 
Okay, I'm losing a little bit of visual here. Yeah, I was never able to fly this far. Wow, this 200 milliwatts is doing a fantastic job. 200 milliwatts is doing this. Crazy. a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so we're back from our flight and the TinyGo 4K with the Express LRS receiver performed very, very well. This thing was a blast to fly. Okay, so let's talk about my experience here today with this Express LRS receiver. The first thing I noticed here was that once I put the goggles on, I saw a little bit more breakup than I anticipated. And I don't know what's causing that, maybe the environment. It could be the receiver as well. I have the receiver a little bit, well, it's in the same location as the stock receiver. So I don't know if that's interfering with my VTX. Nothing too detrimental, but you can see it on the image there. And I said to myself like, hey, what's going on here with this little, you know, flutter of the image? You know, I kind of ignored it. And after we took off, the VTX and video signal was a lot better. The drone took off normal, responded very well. We did have the DBM and the length quality on the on-screen display, and that worked pretty well. It looked pretty average, pretty adequate. But one thing I didn't notice in the first flight was that I had a DBM message below, and that's a warning if your DBM goes below a certain value, it will warn. Now, I don't know why it's doing that because I had adequate signal, so um, I did check that off when I did do the beta flight settings. So that was maybe an error on my part, um, but I'll look more into that. Now, typically when I've flown the TinyGo 4K, I've used the GR8 radio and it worked okay. Now, I never had a fail safe with this radar per se, but I was using different telemetry on this as well. So I was using RSSI and, you know, I did want to get a reminder of this radar before I flew it with the Express LRS. I bring this up to say that whenever I flew this drone in the past, I kept it around the basketball court. Never any further than that. But with the Express LRS receiver in here, flying around the basketball court was not even a challenge. We went further and further away. So I took this drone normally where I fly my bigger quads and bigger drones, especially for testing and no issues, guys. Good link quality, good DBM values, so no issues there. Obviously the biggest issue at that point was my VTX signal. This is a 200 milliwatt VTX. And I did get a little bit of break up there, but I didn't hang around the air too long just because I know this is a, a less powerful VTX and we weren't really testing that. It's kind of interesting because when I did fly this drone with the GR8 radio, my biggest concern was just having a fail safe. And that's typical of any drone, you just don't want to have a fail safe. But with the Express LRS, my biggest fear was flying it so far that I couldn't find the drone. So the point here being, if I, fly, if I flew this thing to the range that this thing is capable of, um, I may not be able to recover my drone because it was so far away, not because it was going to fail safe. 
All right, so I did fly this drone for only a few batteries and it worked really well. I figured since I had some extra batteries, I was trying to see how snappy, how responsive these controls would be. Now, this is already a very touchy and very sensitive drone, meaning it's very snappy, it's very light, very agile. Trying to see how agile it was would be an uh, interesting thing. So I figured I have some more batteries, let's do some light limited freestyle and see how this thing would work and sure enough guys these, this control was very snappy i did a control check i did it a lot on my drones just to see how responsive how quick the rates are um, when i go full deflection on the sticks and as you can see in the video this thing is just twitching away pretty fast so it is very responsive did some light acro maneuvers do some loops some rolls and then i try to do a dive as well and um, this thing obviously isn't made for those kind of acro maneuvers but you know, it worked pretty well. The, the, it's just a change of, of pace that you have so much more confidence now with the Express LRS receiver. Making you do things with this drone that you normally wouldn't do with the original receiver and radio here. So I haven't installed an Experience Express LRS on my Tiny Go 4K. Do I recommend this installation on your drone? Well, yes, for numerous reasons. The big one being I can use any radio to control and fly my drone. So I'm using my drone particular. This is my daily driver, but I can use any radio for that matter. But if you have a radio that you feel comfortable flying or using on the sim, then that's another option. The next one will be the range. The range will be significantly improved uh, compared to your FHSS protocol. And that's been tested and proven by many pilots in the FPV hobby. So Express LRS does have the benefit of having long range. And that means less chance of fail safe with your drones, guys. Now, the third reason will be the lower latency. And if you are a person who wants quick response time, good response on your sticks, good feel, then Express LRS will give you that. You can adjust that. Obviously, you can have lower latency or higher latency if you want more range but you can always adjust it with your radio. In my opinion, yeah guys, it was really worth it. The receivers aren't that expensive. They're between 10 and $15. And if you have a soldering iron and some solder, anyone can easily tackle this job. All right guys, so what do you think about the Express LRS on the Tiny Go 4K? Is this something that you would tackle and do yourself? In my case, I think it was definitely worth it. Now I can actually fly this drone with my daily driver radio. And if you also want to install Express LRS on your Tiny Go 4K, I'll leave that video linked right here so you can take a look at it. So anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace!